Welcome to Stepdads. I'm your host, Preston Tompkins. And I'm Zach Reinert. We're not your first choice, but we're always there for you. Uh, Zach, we're in uh, week, what, two or three of this invasion? Uh, <laughs> this, it's hard to keep track of Potential this war. Man, dude, like, every time I look at the news, there's just one. I had to stop for a little bit because I was getting, like, my anxiety was through the fucking roof. But every time I go back and look, there's something new about a nuclear faci- facility or it's all, there's so many every day. There's like an attack at a nuclear facility. It seems like it's like, my God, they, <laughs> it's like, does Putin not want to drop a nuke, but he wants to like, I don't know, cause their own little Chernobyl two, you know, it's like guys, we've already got a Gotham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need to make Arkham Asylum. We got it. Yeah, you know? we, we, it's insane, man. But uh, now the, the the news, the false flag news, is that Putin's claiming that Ukraine and the United States had chemical weapon facility in Ukraine, and like I mean, that's going to be his justification to bring us into the war. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, no. just because we've already gotten out in front of it. Uh, it's just weird how many things Russia does while everyone knows their bald face lie. Yeah, like it's they're like they're like we predict the lie and then they still do it anyway. Yeah, it's like a child who uh It's like what? It's like we just said Yeah. We literally just said you were gonna do this. Exactly. It's it's like a child who has uh chocolate chips on his face, like chocolate on his yeah. face. Like, no, I didn't reach in the cookie jar. No, we fucking see it right there. We yeah. know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, there was like a whole Twitter thread I was reading about how Russian politicians like they're like they openly like bald face lie like even more than like American politicians, but there's no like strategy behind it. They just like no. do it. They just yeah, it's just they're they just have, talking shit. Yeah, like there's no plan. Uh, but they also have a pretty good playbook from America with the Iraq War. Like, hey man, yeah, s- like with that famous Colin Powell image of that dust in a vial. Like, they could have stuff like this. Well, I mean, I just imagine all the people, even within our, our country, they could probably get on their side if they said like, "There's another COVID lab over oh there." Oh my God, Jesus! Shit. Like, like, Alex Jones is getting harder and you, harder you every think, day. You don't think? Yeah, you don't think Russia knows that shit? Yeah, it's it's like basically all he has Putin has to do is be like COVID lab. I don't know. <laughs> there are some people that <laughs> legit think that Alex Jones is a Russian agent. Like, yeah, it. I mean, how how many times can you suck one man's dick before? Uh, you know, he does uh, support him. Yeah, lot. he does. Zach, uh, I'm very excited about Nerd Rest, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, uh, Lord of the Rings, Nerd oh Rose, March 26th. March 26th, 10 p.m. Denver Comedy Underground. Denver Comedy Underground. Buy your tickets soon because I had... DenverComedyUnderground.com? Yeah, yeah. Just search Denver Comedy Underground. It's literally the first thing that comes up. Tickets are $15. Uh, I would recommend... I'm going to put the link again in the show description. I recommend getting your tickets fast. It's going to sell out. I had someone... We're uh, very confident it's yeah, going to sell confident. out now. Yeah. yeah, we had someone message us like, hey, we just got 20 tickets. Uh, and like he he made his own Facebook group. And I know of another person... I know of another comic on the show that has like five friends, like at least buying tickets. So yeah. Like, so If you want to go, buy tickets. Buy tickets. Uh, also, Patreon. Zach and I are going to start doing some Patreon episodes. Uh, yeah, uh, we need money for equipment and light. I was putting my light kit together for this, and like a bulb smashed, and then one of my uh, soft boxes <laughs> it Jesus. fucking snapped. So uh, we have not touched any of our Patreon money yet. We're just literally banking that, so it's not like I'm going out and buying Arby's with it. So. <laughs> uh, we're going to put in some Patreon episodes. You get access to Nerd Rose. You can also get access to the episode a day early. It's $5 a month, and that's it. Uh, we have a roast review, Zach. Okay. Uh, very excited about this. Excited roast about review. that. Uh, I'm not going to say who it's by. Um, the title says, Don't Eat Here. Do you think I'd be able to guess it? Guess who they are after the I want you to guess okay. after I read it. Okay. Uh, the title is Don't Eat Here. This podcast is the porta potty behind the dumpster behind Lauren Bobert's Shooter's Grill. It's Mike Perry. It's Mike Perry. Yep. Hey. <laughs> Shout out Mike Perry. We love you. Um, we need to schedule a date for him to get on here. Um, either via Zoom. I don't know. I feel like I want to be in person for that one. Yeah, I feel we like we Omaha. might have to do most episodes now in person. It'll be hard to do with the Wikipedia and the reading. Yeah. Um, so Mike, when we get out to Omaha to do a nerd roast and stepdad show, uh, we will have you on. Zoom. Yeah, over yeah. I, I, that's gonna be much better than over Zoom. 
Um, and then we also got a shout out. Uh, we got an email. If you want to email us questions, comments, corrections, uh, definitely a lot of corrections. We fucked up on a president two episodes ago. Oh, that's uh, right. We got a shout out <laughs> from John Dahlgren. Uh, but email us at step.dadsyahoo.com. We just got an email from Robbie. Uh, I won't say your last name because I, I didn't get permission, but shout out Robbie. He gave us a suggestion for in the subject line said Alaskan conservative separatist. <laughs> Like you, you, I want to watch that movie right away. I, I didn't read the Wikipedia article cause I didn't want to be spoiled. I want to read it on the podcast, but, uh, if you have suggestions on who you want to hear about, send us the Wikipedia article. Uh, and Robbie also asked if we want to do international politicians and I'm like, fuck yeah. Oh, international politicians yeah. might be fun. Yeah. So send us, I your mean, we killed half of them. <laughs> 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 You're goddamn right. So, uh, r- like great, r- and uh, review and subscribe. Uh, check out our YouTube. We're going to be putting some more sketches out on there soon, too. Uh, Zach, this week, do you want to say who we're going to learn about this week? Jordan Peterson, motherfucker. Jordan Peterson, motherfuckers. It's going to get it's going to get spicy today. Going to learn about this idiot. It's going to get we spicy. We actually got into an argument with one of our close friends for many years about yep. Jordan Peterson, who got uh, Joker, who got Joker fired. <laughs> I don't want to get into it because he's not here to defend himself, but it was just like, you ever be friends with someone for a very long time and then you're like, I don't know who you are anymore. And they had like one, well, they had like one conversation with someone and they wanted to tell you about the new thing that they yeah. learned. I'm like, no, dude, it's this like, is the thing I learned. It's since we've talked last and yeah. it happened to be Jordan Peterson. It is fucking Jordan Peterson. So in, the, in that light, we are inspired. So I, we, I want to ask, okay, so Step before we read the article, we're going to say what we know about him already. Okay. And then after it's like what we learned. So what I know about him is he's a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, he has some really, uh, I'd say just objectively bad opinions about trans people. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a ba- I definitely know that he has bad opinions about trans yeah. people. Uh, he is a big influence uh, in the conservative world. Yes. Uh, and he used to be a incels teacher. love. It. I know that incels love him. Yeah. Uh, I actually don't know why incels love him. So I'm looking to learn about that. Uh, but it's like, he's always quoting. One thing I know is that I think he almost, I don't know if this is true, but I think I heard that he almost killed him and his daughter on like the raw meat diet. Like, they were Holy doing, shit. What? Yeah. They were doing like this carnivore raw meat diet. And I think that him and his daughter oh my were God. doing it okay. almost died. I, I, I hope that's in here. Um, other than that, yeah, uh, all I know about him is he's, uh, other than like his popular like clips that have gone viral, it's just, he's largely discredited too. I always just picture that scene in Ferris Bueller where they're at the restaurant at the end and yeah. he's like, and it's like Cameron's at the restaurant. like, my name is Jordan Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think that's the name. It's something Beatles Peterson, but it's right. Like, right. I always just, yeah. every time I hear that, I think of that scene in Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Oh my God. All right. Uh, and once again, full disclaimer, uh, the purpose of this is we do not research these people at all beforehand. We're learning them. We want to learn as we read it. So we're learning, learning with them. you. Uh, so like on the last episode, if you listened, uh, we had a lot of, uh, um, opinions about Lauren Boebert that we said before we learned it. And then as we were reading, we're like, Holy shit, I was actually wrong about that. Um, so that's the point of this. We want to learn. Uh, we want to, you know, I mean, we, she was just as dumb as I thought she was. Right. But I didn't just know in different ways. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Um, but yeah, we talk shit about these people, but we actually want to do the quote unquote research and learn about it. So, uh, Jordan Peterson is a Canadian clinical psychologist, YouTube personality author, and a professor Emeritus at the University of Toronto. I love that YouTube personality yeah, is that's, included in all these uh, other fuck things. Fuck off, man. Uh, my favorite tweet I saw yesterday was like, stop trying to be content creators. We need electricians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which Fucking it, YouTube yeah. personality. He's got, it's like Emeritus professor at some university yeah. and then just YouTube YouTube, yeah. Like that's literally two. Like he's the island boys. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, follow us on YouTube and watch our sketches. Um, <laughs> he began to receive widespread attention in the late 2010s for his views on cultural and political issues, often described as conservative. Born and raised in Alberta, Peterson obtained bachelor's degrees in political science and psychology from. Where the, are you st- I'm sorry. 
Oh, I, I'm reading the second paragraph. Uh, after teaching and research, uh, after teaching and research at Harvard University, he returned to Canada in '98 to permanently join the faculty of uh, of psychology at the University of Toronto. Okay, so right away, uh, a I'm lot surprised of he wasn't a comedy writer. He went to Harvard. <laughs> Surprised he's not on SNL. A lot of these conservatives who quote him are typically the America First people, and they are against I immigrants. He's, he's very Canadian. Yeah, so he's like he's someone that came here, studied here, and then went back to his country. Like so, like that's what they fucking hate, right? Like no, to be fair, they probably actually appreciate that. Like, he yeah, went back to his own place. Right, that's true. Um. We'll put a pin in that. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> in 99, he published a book, Maps of Meaning, the Architecture of Belief. Go oh, fuck yourself. That's a very pretentious That's like, title. Uh, it's just like uh, all those books you see in every bookstore. You see like the art of not giving a fuck. Oh, yeah, it's like fuck off. Why you need to be an asshole. Exactly. Why you need to not give two shits. Or The Maps of Meaning uh, became the basis for many of his subsequent lectures. The book combines psychology mythology, religion, literature, philosophy, and neuroscience to analyze systems of belief and meaning. Fuck off. Uh, in 2016, Peterson released a series of YouTube videos criticizing the Act to Amend the Canadian Human Rights Act in the Criminal Code. Passed by Parliament of Canada, introduced gender identity and expression as prohibited grounds of discrimination. <laughs> Of course, he's against that. Yeah. In October 2016, specifically, while on a University of Toronto's campus engaging in dialogue surrounding Bill C, uh, Bill C-16, a protester approached Peterson and filmed a video that was then released online, making one of the most viral videos subsequently propelling Peterson's image online. He argued that the bill would make the use of certain gender pronouns compelled speech and related this argument to a general critique of political correctness and identity. Identity politics. He subsequently received significant yeah, so this media is like coverage. A, it's already the first thing we read. He's already first going against thing. like trans people. Or yeah. Like, All right. So here's here's kind of my viewpoint on that. Uh, well, I don't, feel, I don't feel like a man because yeah, these I, other people. Who gives a shit? Uh, Peterson. So he's got PhDs, right? Yeah. He comes off as a person to me that would say, uh, "Excuse me, it's doctor." You know what I mean? So he yeah. like those. People, also, if you wanted to feel like a man. Uh, maybe go get some fucking trade school degrees. Yeah, and exactly. Some fucking PhDs, bitch. <laughs> how about you start uh, learning about the arts and psychology? And maybe how about you, you pick how up to a build fucking, a fucking table? Yeah, build a fucking table. Put, put a hammer in your hand, you fucking asshole. Uh, but yeah, like these people that are like, oh, I'm a doctor, but then he has a problem with someone asking to be called a certain way. Like, yeah. who gives well, a, a shit? He's a horrible doctor. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like that's that's my thing about it. it's like people demand to be at, called doctor all the time. Oh yeah, people don't have a problem with that. But if someone's like, oh well, I prefer to be called she, they, he, him, you know, they, them, but that's the problem there. It's like that's just what they want to be called by. Who gives a fuck? So let's do <clears throat> early life. Peterson was born in '62 in Edmonton, Alberta, and grew up in Fairview, a small town of northwest of the province. He was the eldest of three children born to Walter and Beverly Peterson. Beverly was a librarian at the Fairview campus. See, librarians can't have kids because then they'll read too much and they become, grow up to become <laughs> fucking assholes. Fucking nerd assholes. He had too much time to read. Uh, his middle name is Burnt after his Norwegian great grandfather. Well, I feel Burnt. Like there's right. some uh, white nationalists or white supremacy stuff considering it's Norwegian. <laughs> yeah. Ancestry. In junior high school, Peterson became friends with Rachel Notley and her family. Notley became a leader of the Alberta New Democratic Party. Uh, Peterson joined New Democratic oh, Party wow. from ages 13 to 18. He I was a fucking tuck I, liberal in yeah. the beginning. Do <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we do... Okay, I just want to lightly touch on his uh, education. He later transferred to University of Alberta, where he completed his BA in political science in 1982. Afterwards, he took a year off to visit Europe, where he began studying the psychological origins of the Cold War. That's weird. Uh, 20th century European yeah. totalitarianism. Totalitarianism in the works of Carl Jung, Frederick Nietzsche, Alexander Slash, I can't read it, and Fit. Uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky. Uh, as this podcast goes on, you will learn that I do not know how to read. 
He then returned to the University of Alberta and received BA in psychology in 1984. It's never a good sign when someone takes a year off from college to go study in Europe about European former leaders. That's a fucking red flag right there, buddy. <laughs> probably, and probably it was like uh uh, studying to become a Nazi. Oh, absolutely. Like he literally went to Nazi school. It's like, let me learn about these European yep. <laughs> leaders. Uh, he conducted research into familiar alcoholism and associated, uh, psycho psychopathology, such as childhood and adolescent aggression, hyperactive behavior, uh, career, <clears throat> Uh, from 93 to 98, Peterson lived in Massachusetts while teaching and conducting research at Harvard University, where he was hired as an assistant professor in the psychology department, later becoming he associate professor. a janitor who was really good at math. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. Uh, while still at Harvard, he switched his primary area of research from uh, alcoholism, uh, familiar alcoholism to personality and authored several academic papers. Yeah, dude was obsessed with alcoholism. Dude, yeah, what the fuck? He must have been like a huge drunk or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> or, well, familiar, so I assume like or someone his parents was, were yeah. drunks. Yeah. Was it his mom the librarian the drunk? <laughs> There's too many fucking books. It's, you don't know how stressful my fucking, fucking day books. is. <laughs> uh, Shelley Carson, former PhD student, now professor at Harvard, recalled that Peterson's lectures had something akin to a cult following, stating, I remember students crying on the last day of class because they wouldn't get to hear him anymore. Jesus Christ. Ugh, that's not a good sign. Following his associate position at Fucking Harvard. Cuck motherfuckers. I don't. What if that's like Conan O'Brien? Yeah. <laughs> those... <laughs> I'm all for having great teachers and stuff, but when they develop a a quote unquote cult following like that. It, it's a little dangerous to me. Yeah. You know? It becomes theatrical and yeah, it it sounds like he's trying to lean a certain way. Um, uh, beginning in 2003, Peterson appeared in various TV productions, speaking on a range of subjects from psychological perspective. Uh, he appeared on big ideas in 03 to 06 and in a 13 part lecture series based on maps of meeting his, his book that he wrote aired in uh, 2004. Maps of meaning. I know that is so. What maps of? Me oh my god! It purposely tries to sounds sound uh, ambiguous. It, it's almost like it's trying to sound like an Ayn Rand. Oh, title. absolutely! Like Atlas Shrugged. Maps yeah. of meaning. Yeah. Fuck off! It's all map shit. What the fuck is the deal yeah. with the map shit? Ugh. All right. So what's uh, I saw disciplinary. Uh, for most of his career, Peterson maintained a clinical practice, seeing about twenty people a week. He has been active on social media, and in September 2016, he released a series of videos in which he criticized that bill that we talked about at the beginning. As a result of new projects, he decided to put the clinical practice on hold in 2017 and temporarily stopped teaching as of as of 2018. In February 2018, Peterson entered into a promise with the College of Psycholo Psychologists of Ontario after a professional misconduct complaint about his communication and the boundaries he sets with his patients. He fucked the student. Oh my God. He fucked the student. He got his dick wet. This looks like a blueprint for a fucking movie about, yeah. oh my God. That's pretty blatantly like it's I so, fucked yeah. a chick. It's so predictable. The college did not consider a full disciplinary hearing necessary and accepted Peterson entering into a three month undertaking to work on private prioritizing his practice, improving his patient communications. Peter Peterson had no prior discipline, disciplinary punishments or restrictions. Yeah, that's because he's been losing it gradually over the yeah, last few years. Yeah, my God. Um, I don't even want to read this God stuff. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in the fall of 2021, Peterson resigned from the employment of University of Toronto, becoming a professor emeritus. All right, so here's, before we go to break, so far, what we learned, uh, <clears throat> he fucked a student, obviously. He, he definitely nailed a student. He nailed a student. He uh, is a product of a librarian. Was a cuck liberal. Cuck liberal. Something changed him. <clears throat> Something, uh, I don't know what, we didn't, didn't you know, go in there about like what. Yeah. What's made interesting him, is that was what the made same, him switch from a cuck lib yeah. to a fucking. Yeah, that's interesting because Lauren Bober had the same yeah, origin. She was a cuck lib also. Man. <clears throat> It started to make me believe if I have kids, maybe don't lean too left. I think that they were just like poor. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. They were just poor, guys. It's fine. 
<laughs> and then they grew up and became grifters. And they're like, oh, fuck. And then you realize the whole world's a stage, baby. The whole world's a stage, baby. And with that, we're going to go to break. Here's your fake ad. Are you tired of waiting for the pay-per-view each month for the UFC? Golden Corral. They have fights there, too. Thanks again for uh, Greg Ellis for that fucking music. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thanks, Greg. All right. I do not want to cover his works. Uh, I will fucking. You don't want to cover his works? Uh, well, it's, it's uh, details about his books. Well, let's just do the first one, the Maps and Meeting, because that keeps coming up. Oh, we could go to Views. Oh, let's go to Views. Oh, <laughs> they have a whole section on a YouTube channel and podcast. Let's go to Views. <clears throat> All right, views. Uh, Peterson has characterized himself uh, politically as classic British liberal. Okay, which means he's racist. Okay, that for sure racist is the definition of racism. Classic British liberal. They were the ones that are like, yeah, let slaves. Classic American liberal is racist. Oh my god, hundred percent. Fuck you, whoever just like rolled your eyes listening to that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a uh, dude. If you at oh my god, if you look up liberal viewpoints in like the sixties. Oh yeah, I it, it terrifies me to think what that was. You know, well, I, mean, I mean, no, like, it's just like no, everything's more far right now. Like, yeah, Obama now is basically like what Reagan was, and like right, that, and age. that's what I mean. Like, <clears throat> like, like actual liberals considered then were actually like really liberal. Like, oh really? Yeah, yeah. like uh, what's the one term? I guess Jimmy I mean, Car- like Jimmy Carter's like an actual yeah. like, legit. I guess I mean heart. like. 65 Democrats. I think that's what I mean. Yeah. You know, uh, but classic British liberal that, and okay. The, the well, word British are just like, yeah. Uppity. Oh my God. So classic British liberal and a traditionalist. Anyone that says they're a traditionalist. I, so in my wedding, I had a, uh, uh, my best friend, Sydney, a woman as one of my groomsmen. And I saw, I'm not going to name names, but I saw some people tut tut at that and like turn their heads. And like, I've heard one of those people say that they're a traditionalist, you know, like I just like tradition, you know what I mean? Like that, it like fucking grosses me shit? out. Like who gives a fuck? Uh, he has stated that he's commonly mistaken as right wing. Well, uh, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. He eats raw meat and yeah. hates trans people. And- like that. You can't get much more right wing than that. The New York Times described Peterson as conservative leaning and the Washington Post described him as aspiring conservative thought leader. Excuse me. Uh, Yoram Hazoni wrote in the Wall Street Journal that the startling success of his elevated arguments for the importance of order has made him the most significant conservative thinker to appear in the English speaking world in a generation. Oh, God. Ugh. The Wall Street Journal editorial page writer Barton Swain wrote I would describe Peterson as conservative. His interest lies in individual rather than societal order. And he says that, says little about public policy. But it's true that he is not infrequently winds up holding conservative viewpoints on cultural matters. How can you consider yourself traditionalist and not conservative? I mean, it's yeah, literally I, the same. I, he just same doesn't word. want to be lumped in with like, yeah, those people because he's an academic. Yeah, he, and like, like conservatives aren't looked at like well in the academic community. Right. I'm assuming. Yeah, and I since guess he came from that. He's like, no, 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 don't throw me in that. Yeah, I, I guess. Is he? He's, pop, well, obviously popular among like libertarians, you know. Well, yeah. So yeah. I wonder if he wants to be considered more of that. He, which means he also probably googles <laughs> the age of consent in every <laughs> state. <he goes. laughs> Zach and I were on a show yeah, called. We don't <laughs> that, no. no, no. No, no. You don't want to start some uh, comedy drama we today? Don't to, we don't have to start comedy <laughs> drama today. Not today. Not today. <laughs> For listeners outside of uh, Denver, I'm sorry you won't get to know the uh, the juice on that. Anyways. Not to, maybe on a Patreon. <laughs> Ooh, on a Patreon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll get spicier we'll get, on the we'll, Patreon Yeah, we'll get spicier episodes. on that one. We'll have more comedy drama on yep. Patreon. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Uh, oh, well, I just answered my own fucking question right here. Uh, the biggest tell that Peterson is conservative is simply that his general disposition toward life and society is conservative. In the Los Angeles Times, libertarian journalist Kathy Young commented that Peterson's ideas are a mixed bag. But you wouldn't know this from reading Peterson's critics, who generally cast him as a far-right boogeyman riding the wave of misogynistic backlash. So uh, libertarians come into his fucking defense. 
Well, he like literally says things like that, like women need to like stick to their roles and men need to like stick right. to their roles. I, which, if you look at history, that's never been the fucking case. You know, like yeah, in like American like society, it was considered sticking to roles, but nobody. It was not like people were happy in those fucking roles. No. And like, <clears throat> how many times in history has there been stories about women not in those traditional roles that? lived a great fucking life. The only reason why like everything seemed great is because there was no fucking internet. Yep. Yeah, it seemed great because no one had a no way one to was airing their beefs all yeah. day on Facebook. <laughs> I guarantee you if there was a way for women to communicate in those times, they would not be fucking happy. I would love to see like 19 like fucking whatever 70 whatever Facebook yeah. like 1950 Facebook or just like my husband's screaming in the middle of the night about Vietnam again. <laughs> Just a mom complaining Can't about hold down a job. <laughs> I've had a long day taking care of. Luckily, Timmy. luckily rents only 50 bucks a month. <laughs> Just, just uh, bitching. Anyway, um, here's a selfie of my ass. <laughs> Any? Oh my god! <laughs> There's a lot of thoughts coming to my head right now. 1950s Facebook man, or uh, yeah, uh, middle of Vietnam. Just complaining about um, the, yeah, no one was fucking happy doing the dishes when oh, their husband man. was having if PTSD. TikTok existed in like 1975, and they're just recording their husband. <laughs> <laughs> There's Jimmy. Uh, but what, what was a popular song in the 70s? Like Leonard Skinner. Oh, it's like a CCR. Yeah, like yeah. What was that? Moon Rise <laughs> or something like Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah. But he's in the middle of the street in his underwear, <laughs> thinking he's back in the jungle. <laughs> He's like he's in the shower with a gun. <laughs> that moment when your husband's having PTSD in the I'm shower. I'm a traditionalist. I'm a fucking traditionalist. <laughs> oh, my God. See, now, I thought this episode was going to be too dark and sad because of the trans thing. But here we are, Zach. We made it to Vietnam. We made it somehow. to Vietnam somehow. Oh, my God. Okay. Um all right, one little last piece on his views here. Uh, but yeah, so libertarians are defending him. Uh, Nathan J. Robinson of the left-wing magazine Current Affairs writes that Peterson has been seen as everything from a fascist apologist to an enlightenment liberal because his vacuous words are a kind of Rorschach test onto which countless interpretations can be projected. That sounds like you, that sounds like you are liking oh him. That sounds like, when you write something like that, you're just admitting that you like him. Yeah. And it's like, well, no, it's a Rorsch whatever you read. It's yeah. your interpretation. And that's not you you can't have a Rorschach test when someone says it's science. You can't be called he him if you're born a woman. That's not a Rorschach test. You're just No, you're just a piece of shit. You're a piece of fucking shit. Okay, all right. So here's gonna be kind of into where you and I have more opinions about too. Academia and political correctness. Uh, Peterson suggests that universities are largely responsible for a wave of political correctness. Oh, you mean smart people came up with ideas? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you like, mean the places where smart people come from came up with ideas? Yeah. Holy oh shit. Oh, my God. What, Let's sound the alarms, folks. What a world. You know, it's a, a college comprised of kids away from their parents for the first time in their lives and are actually allowed to have opinions and they realize like oh shit yeah maybe i don't call someone the f word i don't call someone the b word and it's like oh yeah we we don't have to live in that society where that's accepted but what the fuck do we know um <laughs> a uh, wave of political correctness that has appeared in North America and Europe, saying that he had watched the rise of political correctness on campuses since the early 90s. He makes it sound like it's fucking uh, 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 herpes. It or, like the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, man, in the early 90s, I saw the early steps of Jordan his career. I saw Jordan coming up. I saw him coming up. You know, just even during flu season, he was fucking killing it. <laughs> 
Uh, Peterson believes that humanities have become corrupt and less reliant on science, in particular sociology. He's he can, like the one conservative asshole that's like, no, we need to believe more. In yeah, science. a conservative believing in science is Jordan Peterson. That's a bad fucking product. Unicorn, right the unicorn. The, <laughs> the conservative unicorn. Um, he contends that proper culture has proper. been... Proper. That's that British shit. It's that traditionalist... That's that British yeah. shit. Yeah. I'll punch <clears throat> you in your face. You say proper culture. Yeah. In front of me. <laughs> Here's fucking proper bitch. You say proper culture in front of me, you're getting fucking knocked out. Yeah. All right. So another thing about my wedding is the, the concept of uh, what is, ex- quote unquote, accepted traditionally. What is proper etiquette? And like the words etiquette... That triggers me. Like that's a hundred percent conservative fucking talking point. Oh like, yeah, <clears throat> no etiquette at weddings. It's whatever the yeah. fuck you want to do. And you could apply that to anything. Well, it's not proper etiquette. That that just means that you don't like fucking change, man. Yeah. <laughs> proper culture. Go fuck yourself. Uh, he contends that proper culture has been undermined by postmodernism and neo Marxism. Ugh. Peterson critiques of political correctness range over issues such as postmodernism, postmodern feminism, white privilege, <laughs> the whole range of fucking and environmentalism. Go fuck yourself. Environmentalism. He's got really? Environmentalism. That rock. Oh, that's that's uh, so funny. Yum 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 yum. That's amazing. Uh, according He's to fucking cucks, <laughs> He's recycling. Cucks. <laughs> Where's the tradition? Environmentalism? Come on. Uh, according to a study conducted by Peterson and his student, Christine Brophy, on the relationship between political belief and personality, political correctness exists in two types, PC egalitarianism and PC authoritarianism, which is a manifestation of offense sense. Fuck off. Offense sensitivity. See, these are the same people that are like, people are just so sensitive. No, maybe I just, it's not polite. To call someone the F word or the B word. Like everything gets improved as far long as like, okay, the longer society goes, the more things are generally improved. I mean, we, yes. we haven't done this in a while. Right, right. It's been a while. A bunch of idiots in charge. Yeah. It's like it's infrastructure, technology, yeah. how you treat people, mm-hmm. medicine, all that stuff improves. Yeah. It improves sports. And, yeah. There's athletes. Better, like oh everything, it, everything gets better over time. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> All right. I don't know. Okay. This is a thought I'm having right now, and we'll see where it ends up. But the people that complain about traditionalism, you know, like sticking to conservative views and stuff, how can you watch the NFL today or baseball for that fact and love baseball and not realize that it's better because of society advancing and shit like that. Yeah. I, you know I, what? I, it, <clears throat> I mean, that's kind of like exa- exactly what you said, but like, how can you be complaining about sports and realize like, Oh God, 50 years ago, half these players would not have been allowed to play. The only reason why you wouldn't is if, is if you're mad that like just white people aren't in like yeah. the best ones. Exactly. Anymore, yeah. Like, they're like, whatever. I just don't understand. I'm not even going to get into it, but <clears throat> I mean, sports is like a perfect everything example. advances. Everything yeah. advances in like a good way, except yeah. climate. Yeah, yeah, it, climate's the only thing going downhill. But, uh, but like, so I mean, like, but I've just say never, that- I've never looked at sports that way before because that's a perfect example of like how society has changed and gotten better. Yeah, like everything, like yeah, like we would have not had so many great sports moments if it was only down to a certain demographic that got to play. So that's man. I'm learning shit from you today. 30 years ago, LeBron James could score 200 points. In <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay. Gender and gender expression. Wow. So that's sports thing, man. I, I've never thought of it that way. <clears throat> I'm going to use that the next time someone brings this bullshit up. Uh, gender and gender expression. <clears throat> Uh, Peterson argued that there is an ongoing crisis of masculinity. See, this is the thing that keeps coming up. Crisis of masculinity. Who is motherfucker? You have like eight PhDs. You like yeah. go fucking get a trade. Go to like a trading school. Yeah, degree. It, this just reminds you me. Fucking, you don't know how to do shit. This guy has tons of PhDs and years of college and shit. But it boils down to him just saying an Adam Carolla quote. I know. It's uh, Adam cares Carolla, about masculinity, but he probably doesn't even know how to change a fucking tire. Yeah, to change a tire, bitch. I challenge you yeah, to a tire changing challenge. <laughs> My wife, any woman can My change a ta- tire. Post a video of you changing a fucking tire, yeah. bitch. Without anyone else, just you and a cameraman. Yeah, exactly. Like 
see, that's the thing is like, I guarantee you there's millions of women that can change a tire on their own. And I know plenty of women that yeah, change a tire on their own. That's like a super masculine thing. Hey, exactly. That's, that's my point is like, that's view like car shit is viewed as like masculinity. But like for me, I I'm don't know throwing his own thing back. At no, I I'm agreeing with you hundred percent. I would love to see Jordan Peterson yeah. throw a baseball. Oh, my I God. I would pay money to see Jordan Absolutely. Peterson throw a fucking baseball. People were making... Shoot a basketball? Oh. oh, my God. Would pay 20 bucks. I, you know, people were making fun of Fauci for throwing it wide left, but it's like, I don't want him to be good I at that shit. I would love to see Jordan Peterson <laughs> try to throw a fucking baseball. Yeah, I'd fucking kill for that. Uh Crisis. Then he'd be like, well, sports are blah, 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 oh blah, my blah. God. Crisis of masculinity. Like, what? what's the crisis here? He'd do some fucking argument about why sports are gay because you yeah. touch each other's butts. Oh, my God. Uh, and backlash against masculinity, in which the masculine spirit is under assault. Uh, I know someone uh, that is like this, too, that says, man, you just can't be a man anymore. It's like what we were literally drinking beer in, at a barbecue. And it's like we're we're being quote unquote men yeah, right what, now. <laughs> like what are you talking what, about? What make you can watch an action movie twenty four hours a day? Yeah, no one's stopping you, you can from drink a beer, watching you Netflix, can fucking and like that's the quote unquote fight a cop. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey Jordan, fight a cop. That's the only masculine. thing keeping you from being masculine is fucking you, bitch. Yeah, like, you you have some insecurities about that. Uh, he has argued that the left characterizes the existing societal hierarchy as an oppressive patriarchy, but don't want to admit that the current hierarchy might be predicated on competence. Oh my God. He, <laughs> that is so fucking bad. He has said men without partners are likely to become violent and has noted that I mean, male, that's, that's, you know what? I will agree. That's with all, that. of, but that's all of his fans. Yeah, that's all. Exactly. And that's literally all of his fans. Th- it's just incels. And it's like, he literally just described his fans. Yeah. You described your own fucking base, dude. He has said men without partners are likely to become violent and has noted that male violence is reduced in societies in which monogamy is a social norm. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, probably violence goes down if everybody's getting their fucking yeah. rocks off. Yeah, but also part of that is let people be free to get the rocks off however they want. Yeah. And not it, be embarrassed about how they do it. Yeah, I'm sure people are less violent if they're fucking, yeah. you know, getting their dick wet. Oh, my God, this... <laughs> I can't but, believe we know someone that's like, yeah, this dude, just I listen know, to him. I know, it's the dumbest shit I've ever heard, and we have a friend that's like, this guy's smart. Yeah, he has attributed the rise of Donald Trump and far-right European politicians to what he says is a negative reaction to push to feminize men, saying if men are pushed too hard to feminize, they will become more and more interested in harsh fascist political ideology. Okay. So basically, women need to make men come or they're going to become Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> That's his whole fucking viewpoint. How are we being forced to feminize ourselves? I am not being like I'm not being forced to feminize myself. Like what what in his viewpoint is like being forced on men right now? I don't like maybe hygiene. Yeah. Maybe. Fucking shower. Yeah. Asshole. Like is that <laughs> they're trying to feminize me. I have to shower every fucking day. They fucking don't want me to show up drunk to work. Yeah. <laughs> I can't call my secretary <laughs> sugar tits. Yeah, they, they want me to feminize myself. I have to be a gentleman in the workplace. They oh really will. God. <laughs> so fucking. I'll ridiculous. quit if they won't let me call her sugar tits <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I'll fucking quit, man. Uh, Pol- Peterson believes that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Peterson believes that order, quote unquote, is masculine and chaos, quote unquote, is feminine. Woo! That is a fucking that. That's a spicy meatball. Let me see that. Again. That is a divorced man, folks. Yeah. <laughs> that is about as divorced as it gets. They took Peterson away from fucking his students, and look where we are now. That is as bad. As, like, oh man, it doesn't get much more divorced than no. that. No, Peterson. Peterson's just a divorced dad living in a single room apartment that like hasn't gotten laid in a long time he's just like sitting that message like hey guys i want to hang out again i miss you guys like hey i just want to i'm hang sorry out. i've been around you know i was married yeah. <laughs> he just peterson needs a you know what peterson just wants a bro weekend and no one wants to have a bro weekend with him yeah and that's why he's like this is bullshit we're trying to feminize our men 
<laughs> Do chicks just still not want to fuck this guy? Like, I don't understand. I, yeah, I don't. It's get like, it. is the problem that this guy just doesn't still, like, he still just doesn't get laid? I don't know. Like, you'd figure he would because he's, like, huge in the conservative world. Uh, to Peterson, quote unquote, culture is symbolically, arch- archetypally, mythically male. Mythically male. The fuck does that mean? Well, I don't. This dude just makes up shit, man. That's what all these, like, pseudo intellectual dudes do. They're like, it, like fucking. And, and it, like, they all want to make up, like, stupid words, but then they also want it to all be b- boiled down to, like, the most basic barbaric oh, shit. <clears throat> yeah. They like, just, I'm smart, but it should also be, like, 1950s shit. It's exactly. Like, Which is it, motherfucker? Because yeah, pay- if it's 1950s shit, you're not smart. No. Because everything is fucking advanced past then. It really has. You're, you're stuck in the past. To Peterson, culture is mythically male, while chaos, the unknown, is symbolically associated with the feminine. He has expressed that while it may be considered unfortunate that this is the case, any attempt to change or subvert these traits would result in loss of humanity. Saying, you know, you can say, well, is it unfortunate that chaos is represented by the feminine? Well, it might be unfortunate, but it doesn't matter because that is how it's represented. Represented in what? In his own fucking head, it, like there's it, no in his, movie. Like, his own getting dumped shit. Like the bad guys in every movie from the man, '70s is a guy. Like I don't get it. I'm gonna feel bad if his wife like died. Oh man, <laughs> I don't see anything about marriage, and there are reasons for it. You can't change it. It's not possible. This the is spouse, uh, Tammy Roberts married 1989. Oh, is he still married? It says he's still married. So what the fuck is his problem? He literally never even Wait, can divorced. you Google real quick if Peterson's still married? It says, I don't mean, unless she, like, just died. Yeah. So, so while he's Googling that, to finish the quote, this is underneath everything. If you change those basic categories, people wouldn't be human anymore. We wouldn't be able to talk to these new creatures. What creatures? Man, I'm getting dumber by reading his own fucking quotes. Like, I don't understand that. Hmm. Is Jordan Peterson married? Cancer scare. I don't, she had cancer. Tammy Peterson. Been married so, since 1989. Well, <clears throat> here, here's what I'm going to say. He must give good dick if she's still married to him. Because this is bullshit, man. Yeah. Yeah, you can't have those views and be in a good, healthy marriage, I feel like, without no. laying some fucking pipe. You know what I mean? It's like, I, no, men aren't masculine enough when society doesn't want masculinity. <laughs> society doesn't want masculinity. It's like, motherfucker, there's like eight shows on CBS called like SEAL Team. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. like FBI. and You know what happened? His wife asked him to eat her pussy one day, and he goes, women are trying to feminize me. <laughs> Women are chaos. They're on the unknown. He, they, it's the unknown because he can't find the clit. That's yeah. exactly it. <clears throat> oh man! All right. So what did we learn about Peterson today? I mean, I don't think I learned a lot that I, I didn't, didn't already know. No, I, I learned. I just, I read his quotes. I typically don't like to read his quotes because I get a fucking headache and I feel like I'm gonna pass out right now. Yeah, he's not like a good person, and he's kind of a fucking idiot. He's just yeah. like one of those like pseudo intellectual i mean like he actually is an intellectual like he's right. a harvard professor yeah he's not a pseudo intellectual he's a fucking actual yeah. intellectual that's a he's a smart guy i'll that, give him that but yeah like he he tries to come off smarter than something he's a, radicalized him maybe it was yeah. money money he was going after money or something radicalized uh, his him. parents well that's the thing that i learned from bobert is that she grew up in a primarily like left democratic house so did peterson i guess man but like you said, <laughs> they grew up fucking poor. Yeah. And now they need to be grifters. And uh, yeah, he's a grifter. I mean, I, I literally just think like it's like. If, it's if just you, a grifter thing. If man. you're a poor person and you you're, see a chance to make money, I mean. I mean, the, they. I, I, I hope for that chance. Yeah. I, yeah. You know what, dude? I will go hard right in a fucking heartbeat. Yeah. If our I'll be Patreon Jordan, kicks I'll be off, Jordan Peterson. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you and I would be like, stop eating pussy, men. <laughs> stop doing it. They're trying to feminize you. <laughs> the vaccine made my dog gay. <laughs> Man, I will take a hard right turn. He stopped humping my. <laughs> 
Wait, that would make it okay. That's whatever. No, no. We're, just, it's we're, we're just riffing. Okay. We're just riffing. Man, but yeah, I didn't learn anything new. It's just I learned his reasonings, and that makes me fucking want to scream. Yeah, they're not, they weren't even like good reasonings. No. Like, Nothing it's even like made up. nothing even like bad happened to him. No, to like, like I was expecting to like radicalize yeah, him. Yeah, I was expecting a villain origin story. I was expecting like he was the last just one. Picked money, on the just team. money. It's just fucking money, dude. Just money for him. Uh, and then they took his students away from him, he which could, is about as conservative as it gets. Ca- yeah, like, capitalism. He couldn't bang his students anymore, and then he lost his fucking mind. They, they, yeah, this is what happens when a cult leader doesn't get the rewards of sex anymore. Like that's basically what happened. You know, like like, I'm taking my cult elsewhere. Yeah. Fuck off. I'm stuck in a monogamous (laughs) marriage now, (laughs) man. Uh, stepped out dads at yahoo.com. Email us your suggestions, rate, like rate review and subscribe. Uh, check out our YouTube channel. We're going to be, uh, I want to make some sketches soon. Yeah, we'll make sketches soon. We got the nerd roast. Nerd roast. Uh, donate to our Patreon, patreon.com slash stepdads comedy. It's $5 a month. Early access episodes, nerd roast. We're going to be posting Patreon episodes. Uh, should we do our send off, baby boy? Yeah, let's do it. One, two, three. Fucking Fuck night, Shimlon. We'll see you next week. <laughs>